All right, guys, in the past, people have asked us about the, the process that we go through getting ready for a storm. So it's super late in the season. I think today's the 12th, November the 12th. The National Hurricane Center has an area of interest which could become a tropical storm. And so they noted it, and here on the screen, you can see that it's a 90% chance in the next seven days and a, probably a 60% chance in the next two days. What's interesting about that is Regardless of what time of the year it is, we have to be ready. We just got back off of Milton and Helene, and so we've got some of the Motorola guys. Marquis in here with us now, and Ricky Bobby's out there in the shop getting ready. We're loading the trailer. We've got some other guys coming in because we had a lot of equipment that on those two storms we took off. I thought it might be interesting if we go through the process of how we kind of look and prepare to get ready for a storm. To make a hurricane, we need low shear. So low shear is that there's basically no wind, no prevailing trade winds kind of going across. I use the example of when I was a kid, I'd take a bath and the bathtub would fill up and when you'd pull the stopper out of the bathtub, the water would swirl and it'd make like a tornado in the water. Well, you could take your hand and just rake across that little whirlpool and it would make it go away. In order for a hurricane to be able to form, so if we're worried about predicting whether or not a hurricane is going to form or not so we know if we have to mobilize. A hurricane needs for there to be no shear. We can always look and know if there's shear in the Gulf or shear in the Caribbean Sea that a hurricane can't form. So one of the components we need if you want to predict a hurricane is look at the shear. So right now there's no shear. And the next thing you need is energy and the way you get energy is from the ocean heat content. The Gulf the Caribbean Sea has been uncharacteristically warm for the last couple of months. You can go back and look at the ocean heat content. We're a couple of degrees warmer now than we would be in a typical August. So there's plenty of energy and then we need moisture. We hear a lot of times that when the hurricane forms that dry air gets wrapped into it and it kills it. A hurricane needs thunderstorms and to have a thunderstorm you need moisture. And so you need that warm moisture at the base at the ocean to go up to where it's really cold at 50,000 feet and cool off and condense. And so that's the, that's the other driving factor. So we need no shear, we need heat or energy from the ocean, and then we need the moisture for the thunderstorms to build up. And right now we have all three of those things. Now something happened pretty interesting last night, even before they made this an invest, is there was kind of model consensus among some of the models that we use. And so when we go and look at the GFS today, a lot of people use that as their primary model. Regardless, there's three or four models, but we had pretty strong consensus that, that they were gonna do something. You know, this is um, next Wednesday on the GFS model, and you can see it's a pretty strong storm. I think it's a 956 coming ashore. You know, 956 would be a pretty strong category three Earlier in the run, it has it all the way down to a four. As we look on the, uh, the next model, this is a nav gym model, and you can see it, it kind of has the hurricane doing the same thing, very similar track. This track is a Cat 3 right down the center of the Keys. Again, you know, we're familiar with these areas. The previous one had it kind of going into Fort Myers. Look at the European model. It does a little bit different. It takes the storm a little bit more out over the Yucatan, a little more to the west, and it comes back in and it comes back in more as a, um, as a tropical storm. So when you have the possibility of a tropical storm to a hurricane, category three, category four, you still have to prepare, and that's, that's what we're doing is, is we're getting ready. And so the models all have to work together, so whatever high pressure they put over the Azores, whatever high pressure they put over the United States, whatever cold front's coming in to affect the steering of the hurricane, it has to work for the whole world. So last night when I see in the 18Z and the 0Z runs all have a storm forming at about the same time, all land falling at about the same time, it kind of makes you say, hey, there's a lot of stuff going on when all the global models has all the solutions kind of to coming together. The way I think about it is if you're solving a Rubik's Cube and you've got five solutions and you've got to put it together and then the what actually happens in the weather is the solution. The solution of what's gonna happen is somewhere in there. So it's kind of interesting because some of them had them in Cuba and some of them had them in Big Bend, but you know, three or four of the solutions all went into the Fort Myer, Tampa area, or maybe a little bit south. So there's strong indication that there's gonna be rotation. I grew up on a farm 
and, and chickens, they always laid eggs on Christmas and my birthday and Sunday. They didn't care. And, the, and this hurricane, it's kind of like, like a chicken laying an egg. It doesn't care that it's November. The uh, hurricanes don't carry uh, calendars with them. With all that information in, in place, we're about a week out from the storm, so we have to be ready. So that means now I'm calling the, my crews that are out working and saying, hey, what's, what's on the, the plan for the balance of this week? Because like I said, this is Tuesday. Thinking about if this storm does make by you know the weekend, we'll kind of know, and then it you know these all these models have great consensus, and they're all calling for a landfall of uh, Tuesday to Wednesday, Tuesday going into Wednesday. You know that's kind of one little thing we're doing to kind of get ready. It kind of shows you some of the tools that we use, how we kind of have to go out there and look and see what's kind of happening, so that we can make sure that we have all the equipment, all the people, and all the personnel ready. And it's just like the commitment that Parker has. Uh, Motorola has the same commitment. They've got folks up here getting the trailers ready, getting all the equipment loaded up, making sure that we now look at the customers that they have from basically the Keys all the way up to Tallahassee, identifying that equipment that we utilized on the last hurricane that we might need to get the customer back online. Maybe this gives you a little bit of insight of how we kind of track and follow the weather and watch and have to prepare. and. Um, this, this would be Hurricane Sarah if it makes. And so we're a week out. So like all models are models, all models can be wrong. But man, when there's that much consensus, we just felt like we could give you a little bit of insight of how we look and how we study and how we kind of predict what's gonna happen. You know, we appreciate you watching. This kind of goes along with some of our hurricane prep. Uh, this is something that's happening. You know, we're in real time right now. This is a, about a week out. You know, history will show us if we know what we're talking about on this hurricane or not. Right now, we have to take all the information that we have and all the modeling information that we have and all the historical information. Now, if we were to use just one aspect of that, if we were just to use the aspect of time and the time of the year, we could with great confidence say, hey, there's never been a big storm in November this late or there's only been three or four in the last hundred years, so we're, we're okay. It's kind of like some of the forecasters said, you know, a lot of times they'll forecast storm surge and the hurricane for the worst possible conditions that you could see. So everything has to line up for the worst possible thing. That's kind of what we're doing. We have to look at the worst possible case so that we don't get caught off guard in a couple of days, like next Tuesday, in case these customers or our folks that we're supporting need us. So if our evaluation of this storm is correct, we're going to continue to make videos in this process to let you see and obviously, if this is the only video that you see, then you know that we, Sarah was a bust, that the storm did something else, a high pressure moved in, something happened, and the storm didn't make. But if the storm continues to make, we'll, in the next couple of days, we'll kind of keep updating the videos and keep you included in the process. And then if we were to go, then we'd have a whole video series that started with before Sarah was even a storm until after Sarah's finished, depending on what happens. So yeah, like, subscribe, join us along for the ride, and um, we'll just kind of show you some of the process and behind the scenes of what it takes to be a logistics provider in chasing the unpredictable weather.